Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022 and how this bill is expected to help India achieve its climate target that it has announced both in the Paris Summit as well as the recently held Glasgow Summit. So first of all, tr uh, trying to understand about the context in which we are discussing today's issue because recently the government of India has announced that in a bid to commit or to meet the commitment of the Paris Agreement as well as to achieve or we can say even over achieve the target the center is planning to table the energy conservation amendment bill in the ongoing monsoon session of parliament and it is expected that this bill will increase india's demand for the renewable energy as well as it will help country in reducing the nation's carbon emissions the bill is also proposing to amend the electricity conservation act 2021 and which was last amendment year to amended in year 2010 and also this bill is expected to introduce certain changes which will incentivize use of clean energy that is can say use of cleaner resources of energy by issuing of carbon saving certificates now what is the current act that the bill is trying to change so as per this current act that is the energy conservation act a passed in year 2001 and the last amended in year 2010 this bill basically this act basically empowers the central government to specify certain norms and standards that is used for the that is used for checking the efficiency or energy efficiency of several appliances that is used in industrial equipments or a large scale a large scale industrial buildings at least having a connected dot of more than 100 kilowatt not only that the act also has set up uh, in uh, organization that is called as bureau of energy efficiency and the bureau of energy efficiency has been given the mandate that it can specify the qualifications of the people uh, who are going to be in uh, going to be appointed as the energy auditors and the main job or function of the energy auditor is to monitor and review the power consumption of various industries be is a body that actually uh, uh, appoint all the members and all the staff by itself so it is in that sense a kind of autonomous body at the same time the amendment of 2010 uh, extended the tenure of director general of BE from two years earlier to five years as of now then the third point the bill also or the act also gives power to the central government that it can issue energy saving certificates to those industries who consume or which has consumed lesser than their maximum allotted energy and thus energy saving certificates generated in that manner it can be sold to such industries which has consumed more uh, power than their required quota and in that manner it will actually facilitate energy trading so these are the main or salient features of the current act apart from that the act also empowers central government that central government if it deems necessary can prohibit the manufacturing sale purchase or import of any particular equipment unless in court for conforms to the specified norms that has been issued in last six month to one year time period and as per the penalty provisions under this act if anybody or any group of uh, organizations or any industries if they are found to be in violation of this particular act in that case they can have to pay a penalty of rupees 10 lakh with an additional penalty of rupees 10,000 for each day they have been committing offenses. Now if someone want to appeal against this order of penalty uh, then they can approach to the appellate tribunal that also has been established under the Electricity Act of 2003. So what are the proposed changes that this current bill is trying to introduce? So first of all as per the current bill it is, uh, it is going to define the minimum share of renewable energy that is industry will have to accommodate into second it will also facilitate the promotion of green hydrogen as an alternative to the fossil fuel so what is green hydrogen green hydrogen is basically a type of hydrogen that is produced via a method of electrolysis so let us try to understand the step by step procedure of forming in this production of green hydrogen so first of all we use clean energy generation sources such as hydro energy wind energy solar energy the energy that is generated by these cleaner sources then are used in an electrolyzer and this electrolyzer is used to separate hydrogen plus and OH minus ions in by the method of electrolysis and then in the last in third stage the electrolyzer after splitting the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen finally the hydrogen is extracted is compressed and stored in a separate uh, vessel 
while ever whenever the need requires it can be is used and can be transported to anywhere in the world for domestic or industrial uses so the hydrogen produced in this manner is called as green hydrogen and this bill is basically trying to facilitate the promotion of green hydrogen as a good alternative of the fossil fuel third as of now the current act only encompasses the industrial houses or industrial complexes in its domain so this current bill is trying to include larger residential building under energy conservation standards as well and last it is also considering additional incentives such as carbon credits for the use of clean energy now what is the main objective with which the bill is being introduced so it has three main objectives the first objective is obviously that the bill is trying to reduce india's dependencies on the fossil fuel by reducing its consumption for the generation of power second the bill through this manner will try to minimize the nation's carbon footprint that is the amount of carbon being generated in a yearly basis or a per capita basis third the bill is also trying to meet the nationally determined contributions that has been announced by india during the paris climate agreement in year 2015 so let us try to understand that what is the india's climate change commitment that this bill can help in achieving so first of all the most important climate summit that has happened in the few last uh, one decade is the paris climate summit of 2015 so as per this summit india has declared its ndc that is nationally determined contribution that it will reduce the carbon intensity of its economy by 32 to 33 to 35% by 2030 from its 2005 level second it also said that it will try to achieve over 40% of its power generation is coming from the non fossil fuel energy resources by the end of year 2030 and third india also clearly said that it will create an additional carbon sink for 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide by increasing its tree and forest cover in the next uh, 15 years then after 2015 summit when the last summit happened in 2021 in the glasgow that is cop 26 summit in that summit prime minister narendra modi who participated actually changed or modified the goals or objectives of india's climate change objectives so first of all he said that the india will increase its non fossil energy generation capacity to almost 500 gigawatt by year 2030 second india will also meet 50% of india's power demand via renewable energy resources third the carbon intensity that was reduced by only 30 to 35% by 2030 now india will reduce its carbon intensity by 45% and last it will achieve a target net zero carbon emission by year 2070 that means what it means that by year 2070 the amount of carbon being emitted by the indian economy will be same as the amount of carbon being uh, brought back to the earth surface via creation of carbon sink so these are the four objectives that has been modified and added in the recently held glasgow summit not only that the government of india also has focused a lot on the climate change and its related activities in the budget of year 2023 so what are the major steps that the government has taken so first of all government has allocated almost rupees 19500 crores to facilitate solar manufacturing at the domestic level second government is also trying to encourage farmers to avoid stubble burning in the agricultural field because this is one of the major sources of pollution in india especially in the north and northwestern india during the winter season as the rice crops or the stalk of rice crops are burned around to sow the new type of crops second it also is trying to promote fuel blending fourth a new battery swapping policy has been designed by the india and second it is trying the budget is trying to encourage issuance of green bond to raise capital for the green infrastructure so these are some of the recent initiative that the government of india has taken and it is in this context or in the continuity of these we can understand that the recent bill is going to be introduced and soon will be converted into a act so that is all about this particular topic thank you very much